Lieutenant General Mark Hurdling, a CNN military analyst, former Army Commanding General for Europe and the Seventh Army, and Josh Rogan, a CNN political analyst, also a Washington Post columnist. Good to have you both on. General Hurtling, if I could begin with you, given what you've seen and read of the U.S. intelligence assessments of, for instance, commands going to tactical commanders to proceed uh, with preparations for an invasion and all the forces arrayed along the borders of Ukraine, does a military, does Russia amass all those forces, in your view, just for show? It would seem strange, Jim, that's for sure. But in these kind of situations, any kind of uh, order from the top could stop the momentum. Uh, certainly there seems to have been a drumbeat of war for, for multiple months, and especially during the last few weeks. Uh, but again, I, I, I'm hopeful that uh, Mr. Putin will, will receive some information from his various advisors that requires him to turn around. That's my deepest hope right now. So we don't know yet if Russian troops will in fact invade Ukraine. One thing we do know is that 30,000 Russian troops still remain in Belarus. And those joint exercises were said to have ended yesterday mm -hmm. and that the Russian troops would be returning back to their bases in Russia. Now we know that they will be there for an extended period of time. How big of a threat is that not only to Ukraine, but also now to NATO, which borders Belarus, right? And you're talking about Poland and Lithuania with Russian soldiers at their border. Well, you're talking to a guy who is an old Cold Warrior, Brianna, and, and I'm used to seeing Russian soldiers in other nation states. Uh, it, it's certainly unusual to have that many people from a military of one country posted in another uh, for a long period of time uh, without barracks, without chow halls, without all the things that go along with them. Uh, but we have seen this before uh, with the old Soviet Union, and now Mr. Putin's ideal is to reestablish that in multiple states. His comments this morning about, or yesterday, about crushing uh, and repressing Ukraine, that's what we're used to uh, with the old Russian Soviet army. Uh, it could certainly happen again. Josh Rogan, you've been in Munich at the security conference where there's been a flurry of diplomatic activity, visits from the U.S. Vice President, the Ukrainian President, and also talk of diplomacy. I just wonder, in your conversations there, what evidence have those officials and diplomats seen that, that Russia is really willing to deal here? Because their, their public statements stick to lines, for instance, on forbidding NATO membership at any time for Ukraine, lines that the U.S. and NATO say are non-starters. So, so where's, where's the overlap? Uh, to be clear, Jim, there is no evidence that the Russian government is negotiating in earnest, that they have any intention of finding a common ground with the European or U.S. officials who are putting forth various proposals. Now, you know, if you talk to the Ukrainians, what they'll say is that they want the U.S. and Europe to switch the strategy away from offering concessions and toward upping the pressure on Putin. And they say that this is not like all of the other uh, a, a massing of troops that, that we've seen over history, that the invasion is coming and that, you know, the the signaling that that Putin receives when he receives these messages of diplomacy but not pressure is that he sees weakness. What Zelensky said is that what Putin sees appeasement. So, you know, it makes sense for Harris and Vice President Harris and the European leaders to continue with the diplomacy. No one's saying that they shouldn't continue with the diplomacy. But what the Ukrainians said for three days, not just Zelensky, many Ukrainian officials, uh, in Munich at this conference was, how about some pressure? How about some sanctions now? How about more military support now? How about making an announcement uh, that Ukraine is uh, welcome in EU and NATO and advancing in that cause now? What use is it afterwards? Putin doesn't seem to be deterred, and we can't take any of his claims about being interested in a diplomatic solution at face value. Josh, on that point, I mean, the president of the United States and even what we saw out of Munich was a united front among NATO allies in the face of Russian aggression. But the longer that this standoff goes on, and I agree that diplomacy is better than a hot war, is there concern about fissures within NATO itself? I mean, you're seeing President Macron of France acting as sort of the third party here uh, on the phone with Vladimir Putin and then with uh, President Biden. And just this morning, Vladimir Putin saying something pretty peculiar, saying that Macron had told him that the U.S. may have a change in its position. That is clearly not the language we have heard from the United States. I mean, is he being more helpful here or is he muddying the situation? Mm. Yeah, to be clear, there there is unity amongst the allies uh, and amongst the NATO allies and amongst the Europe, U.S. and European leaders. And there is room inside that unity for individual leaders to put forth 
creative solution. So the fact that Macron is coming up with some stuff that maybe Washington wasn't aware of is fine. That's not the problem. The problem, according to all the officials in Munich that I spoke to, was that the unity of NATO and the unity of Europe and the United States is not lashed up with Ukraine, okay? That there's no unity with the actual people who have the guns pointed at their heads. And that was pretty clear when Zelensky talked, but for those of us who have been talking to the Ukrainians for months, that's been pretty clear for a very long time, and I know both of you know that as well. It just spilled out into the open. So, it, you know, if Macron wants to come up with some creative ideas and they work, great. But, you know, what about listening to the Ukrainians? What about unity with them? What about their asks and their wish? And they, they, they feel they've been cut out of this unity, okay? And what's the good of unity if it doesn't help the people who are actually about to get attacked? General Hurtling, we reported over the weekend that it's the U.S. view that Russia now has 75 percent, three quarters of its conventional forces postured against Ukraine. And that is their battalion tactical groups, basically their combat units. But it's also 35 or 40 air defense systems. It's hundreds of fighters and fighter bombers uh, for a country that spans several time zones focused here. How long can Russia maintain that pressure pressure? With, if it chooses not to act immediately, can it do so for the medium term? It, it's a massive force, Jim. In, in terms of looking not only at the ground maneuver forces, you're talking about the artillery, uh, their, air for, their supporting air forces deployed in different places. I don't think they can maintain that there for very long at that number. Uh, they could reduce it slightly, but that's the, the fear I have. The second fear to war is that they will stay there for a very long time and try and outweigh the West in terms of our unity. Uh, the potential for uh, many uh, European leaders going out on their own and getting off the one page uh, support for Ukraine. So as a military guy, I would tell you it's extremely difficult to keep that number of forces in the field, uh, especially in the kinds of encampments. We've seen the photographs. They are in mud pits right now. Mm. I mean, that is not very beneficial mm. for the morale of soldiers. And truthfully, Russian yeah. soldiers' morale isn't high when they come into an operation. So what we're going to see is continued passing of COVID, uh, living in swamps, living in mud holes, uh, not having very good food, drinking radiator fluid as they've been known to do in the past. This will deteriorate the Russian force if they're asked to stay there for a long time. So I think Mr. Putin's on the horns of a dilemma of should I stay or should I go? Yeah, could also deteriorate as we're saying Ukraine, right? Not only its morale, but its economy as well, as long yeah. as Russia continues to remain encircled around that country. Lieutenant General Mark Hartling and Josh Rogan, thank you as always.